Russia-Ukraine live, AU chief meets Putin, says sanctions against Moscow impacting Africa. Russia-Ukraine war has now entered day 100 with Moscow's forces reportedly closing in on the eastern Ukrainian city of Severodonetsk. U.S. President Joe Biden has pledged more advanced rocket systems and munitions as the conflict continues unabated. However, Kremlin accused Washington of adding fuel to the fire. Putin hosts chairman of African Union, President of Senegal Macky Sall. Russian President Vladimir Putin held talks with the chairman of the African Union and President of Senegal, Macky Sall, in the Sochi. Putin said that Russia has always stood by Africa and supported it in its struggle against colonialism. He also highlighted the increasing role of Africa in today's international arena. Saul on the other hand was quick to highlight the issues confronting Africa because of the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. He pointed out that countries which are far from the main conflict zone were still experiencing its consequences. He added that sanctions against Russia further escalated the crisis of food security in Africa. Belarus Lukashenko talks to UN Chief Guterres, expresses readiness to provide transit for Ukrainian grain. Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko in a telephonic conversation with UN Chief Antonio Guterres expressed readiness to supply Ukrainian grain to the Baltic ports through the Belarusian territory. Lukashenko also guaranteed Belarusian railways support for any related cause. Lukashenko in return also indicated that ports of countries including Germany, Poland and other Baltic countries must remain open for the Belarusian goods at UN Chief Guterres in return asked for some time to bring leaders across the discussed countries on the same page. Kiev claims Russian forces destroyed 24,000 kilometers of roads since inception of war on February 24. According to Ukraine's state-owned road construction agency Ukraft Outer, Russian troops have destroyed 24,000 kilometers of roads since the inception of the war. The agency also claimed that in addition to the roads, Russians also destroyed 300 bridges in Ukraine since February 24. Ukraine says not interested in using foreign supplied weapons on Russian territory. Ukraine is not interested in attacking the Russian territory and would only use the foreign supplied weapons to drive out the forces invading the country, said Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to Newsmax in an his remarks follow the United States announcing that it would send more advanced weapons and ammunition to Ukraine to help the country fight the Russian military army. However, U.S. military assistance to Ukraine triggered criticism from Russia which said that Washington was adding fuel to fire. Additionally, Zelensky's advisor, Mihailo Podolyak also echoed similar remarks and said on Twitter, Ukraine is waging a defensive war and does not plan to use the MLRS to attack facilities our partners know where their weapons are used. SBU exposes five supporters of Russian invasion in Odessa Oblast. According to Kyiv Independent, the security service of Ukraine reported that the suspects had been publicly justifying Russia's war, supporting and glorifying Russian troops on social media, and encouraging Ukrainians to cooperate. Russia-Ukraine war is a major concern for India's population, says Im Jayshankar. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayshankar has said that the Russia-Ukraine war is a great concern for India's population. While attending Globesec 2022 forum and speaking on the topic taking friendship to the next level, allies in the Indo-Pacific region, Im Jayshankar said, Russia's war in Ukraine is a major concern for India's population for two reasons, everyone is interconnected. India is a very digital society and has much awareness, it is impacting people's daily lives through the rising prices of petrol. Russian media outlets ordered not to talk about 100 days of war. Russian state media outlets have been ordered to not discuss the fact that Friday, June 3 marks the 100 days since Russian President Vladimir Putin announced the special military operation in Ukraine, according to a report by Latvia-based outlet. 
Medusa which cited a source in Russian presidential as Russia failed to achieve most of its goals in Ukraine since February 24, when the conflict started, Kremlin is concerned that highlighting how long Putin's war has lasted will show the country in an unpleasant light. The media outlet's unnamed source was quoted as saying, Focusing on dates related to the war can make Russians think about the goals and success of the invasion. When talking about a round date, questions always arise, what has been achieved by this date? They added. EU president expresses solidarity with Ukraine as war marks 100 days. European Union President Ursula von der Leyen, in her latest tweet marking the 100th day of the Russian war, expressed solidarity. 100 days ago, Russia unleashed its unjustifiable war on Ukraine. The bravery of Ukrainians commands our respect and our admiration. The EU stands with Ukraine. Today in Paris, I will discuss with Emmanuel Macron the EU's current and future support to the country, she wrote. Luhansk governor shares images of devastation in Luhansk as war enters day 100. Head of the Luhansk military region, Sergei Haidai on Friday shared images of the devastation in the region as the Russian war gained momentum in the eastern part of the embat. Ukraine armed forces claim to have killed over 30,900 Russian troops since February 24. Ukraine armed forces in their latest war briefing updated that the defenders have liquidated at least 30,950 Russian soldiers since the war began on February 24. In addition, they destroyed 1,367 tanks, 3,366 armored vessels, and 675 artillery systems. UK Mod says nearly 90% of Luhansk region is under Russian control. In their latest war update, the UK Ministry of Defense, Mod, on Friday informed that at least 90% of the regional territory of Luhansk is under Russian control. The intelligence briefing predicted that the invading troops may capture the whole region in the coming two weeks. Moscow appointed head of Zaporizhia region prepares pseudo-referendum in seized districts. U.S. envoy to Ukraine says her number one mission is to help Ukraine prevail against Russia. The new U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Bridget Brink, on Thursday said that her primary mission in Kyiv is to is to help Ukraine prevail against Russian aggression and to ensure military aid from the U.S. region. There is no place on the planet I would rather be, she said. President Biden has said that we're going to be here, helping Ukraine, for as long as it takes. And that's what we'll do, she told reporters, as quoted by the Associated Press. Belarus rotating its special forces unit near Ukraine border, report. According to a report by Union, Minsk is rotating the Belarusian special armed forces in areas bordering Ukraine. Zelensky concedes that Russian attack is powerful in many cities. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky during his late night address admitted that there are many cities where the Russian attack is powerful. He added that the fighting was brutal in the eastern Donbas, but there has been some progress in the city of Severodonetsk, where Russian forces have been tightening their grip. Citing military intelligence information, he said it was too early to give specifics. He further informed that the Russian troops were regrouping away from Donbass. The longer the war goes on, the more vile, shameful, and cynical things Russia is forever inscribing in its history, he added. Zelensky concedes that Russian attack is powerful in many cities. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky during his late night address admitted that there are many cities where the Russian attack is powerful. He added that the fighting was brutal in the eastern Donbas, but there has been some progress in the city of Severodonetsk, where Russian forces have been tightening their grip. Citing military intelligence information, he said it was too early to give specifics. He further informed that the Russian troops were regrouping away from Donbass. The longer the war goes on, the more vile, shameful, and cynical things Russia is forever inscribing in its history, he added. Reports suggest Russia appealed to China for economic support since beginning of war. According to a Washington Post report, citing two anonymous Chinese and Russian officials, 
Moscow had urged Beijing to provide economic support since the beginning of the war on February 24. However, China hesitated initially fearing running afoul of Western sanctions. Thus, the leaders in Beijing set limits on the help they can extend to Moscow. U.S. vows to hold Russia accountable for war crimes committed by its forces in Ukraine. U.S. Undersecretary of State Ozrazea on Thursday expedited calls for strengthening accountability and justice for war crimes committed by Russian troops. Speaking at the United Nations, Zaya said, the U.S. and its allies are vowing to hold Russia accountable for crimes and are ready to support a broad range of international investigations into atrocities in Ukraine. EU president expresses solidarity with Ukraine as war marks 100 days. European Union President Ursula von der Leyen in her latest tweet marking the 100th day of the Russian war expressed solidarity with U.100 days ago Russia unleashed its unjustifiable war on Ukraine. Ukraine. The bravery of Ukrainians commands our respect and our admiration. The EU stands with Ukraine. Today in Paris, I will discuss with Emmanuel Macron the EU's current and future support to the country, she wrote. Luhansk governor shares images of devastation in Luhansk as war enters day 100. Head of the Luhansk military region. Sergei Haidai on Friday shared images of the devastation in the region as the Russian war gained momentum in the eastern part of the embattled Ukraine armed forces claim to have killed over 30,900 Russian troops since February 24. Ukraine armed forces in their latest war briefing updated that the defenders have liquidated at least 30,950 Russian soldiers since the war began on February 24. In addition, they destroyed 1,367 tanks, 3,366 armored vessels, and 675 artillery systems. UK Mod says nearly 90% of Luhansk region is under Russian control. In their latest war update, the UK Ministry of Defense, Mod, on Friday informed that at least 90% of the regional territory of Luhansk is under Russian control. The intelligence briefing predicted that the invading troops may capture the whole region in the coming two weeks. Moscow appointed head of Zaporizhia region prepares pseudo-referendum in seized districts. U.S. envoy to Ukraine says her number one mission is to help Ukraine prevail against Russia. The new U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Bridget Brink, on Thursday said that her primary mission in Kyiv is to is to help Ukraine prevail against Russian aggression and to ensure military aid from the U.S. region. There is no place on the planet I would rather be, she said. President Biden has said that we're going to be here, helping Ukraine, for as long as it takes. And that's what we'll do, she told reporters, as quoted by the Associated Press. Belarus rotating its special forces unit near Ukraine border, report. According to a report by Union, Minsk is rotating the Belarusian special armed forces in areas bordering Ukraine. Zelensky concedes that Russian attack is powerful in many cities. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky during his late night address admitted that there are many cities where the Russian attack is powerful. He added that the fighting was brutal in the eastern Donbas, but there has been some progress in the city of Severodonetsk, where Russian forces have been tightening their grip. Citing military intelligence information, he said it was too early to give specifics. He further informed that the Russian troops were regrouping away from Donbass. The longer the war goes on, the more vile, shameful, and cynical things Russia is forever inscribing in its history, he added. Zelensky concedes that Russian attack is powerful in many cities. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky during his late night address admitted that there are many cities where the Russian attack is powerful. He added that the fighting was brutal in the eastern Donbas, but there has been some progress in the city of Severodonetsk, where Russian forces have been tightening their grip. Citing military intelligence information, he said it was too early to give specifics. He further informed that the Russian troops were regrouping away from Donbass. The longer the war goes on, the more vile, shameful, and cynical things Russia is forever inscribing in its history, 
He added. Reports suggest Russia appealed to China for economic support since beginning of war. According to a Washington Post report, citing two anonymous Chinese and Russian officials, Moscow had urged Beijing to provide economic support since the beginning of the war on February 24. However, China hesitated initially fearing running afoul of Western sanctions. Thus, the leaders in Beijing set limits on the help they can extend to Moscow. U.S. vows to hold Russia accountable for war crimes committed by its forces in Ukraine. U.S. Under Secretary of State Ozrazea on Thursday expedited calls for strengthening accountability and justice for war crimes committed by Russian troops. Speaking at the United Nations, Zaya said, the U.S. and its allies are vowing to hold Russia accountable for crimes and are ready to support a broad range of international investigations into atrocities in Ukraine. Russian war internally displaced over 7 million Ukrainians in last week of May. According to a report by the International Organization for Migration, IOM, at least 7. 1 million Ukrainian people were internally displaced by the escalated Russian war. The assessment report also noted that at least 64% of the people who fled their homes lost their jobs.